welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Jack Kempster. And me, Liam Underwood. And uh, this is a very special episode, isn't it, Jack? It is indeed, Liam. What makes this episode so special? I'm now in my late mid-twenties. What does that mean? 26. That's still so young. I know, I'm just, it's amazing, isn't it? But... I just have so much life ahead of me. But just imagine, right, because you... We would have known each other when I was 26, right? Yeah, yeah. And you would have been calling me old at that age, so you're also now old. Yep. So how does that feel? She was on the other Young foot Jack now. didn't know what he was talking about. Hmm? Young Jack didn't know what he was talking about. Does old Jack now have a bit yeah, more... Yeah, he does, and you're old. A bit more life experience? Yep, and you're the old one. Excellent. Um, so... We're doing Princess Mononoke because it's your birthday and you got to just have free reign on what you chose. Yeah, and I picked something that I thought you'd like, but then anyone that listened to last episode will know you freaked out about it. I was livid. It's insane. Although I don't think I was livid enough because a couple of people did ask, uh, was I mad about that or was the title of the episode because of my opinions on traffic lights? Oh, so they thought I meant like insane mad possibly yeah i guess that could have been misinterpreted i'm just so used to your insanity yeah i don't sort of reference it that much no i i helped clarify and said i think the intent was about it was about the whole what you'd chosen yeah yeah good um so before we get to all that fun stuff where we do some culture swap and all that we're gonna do some catching up with jack and liam so how's your birthday week been jack it's been good, Liam. What have you been up to? I was away on a summer camp with the youth organisation I help at. And was that fun? It was, Liam. It was. Good. We did some really cool stuff. Such as? Uh, we found a outdoor laser quest place. That sounds fun. Called Headhunters. And I thought it was just going to be, you know, the normal laser quest, but outdoors. Mm. Uh, turns out, no. It's You get a laser rifle thing that has 64 shots before you have to go and reload. Yeah. It's like paintballing, but without the pain. And it's amazing. That sounds... And Wait, so it's outside? Yep. Does that mean you can play it during the day? Yep, yep. So I would be able to play it with... Because my eyes obviously don't work in the dark environments. Yeah, exactly. This sounds awesome. It, dude, it was genuinely amazingly fun. Like, we all got way too into it. The staff, that is. Yeah. The kids didn't care. <laughs> no, the, the kids were enjoying it, but there was, there was definitely a moment. So the way it worked was, like, we had two bases. Mm-hmm. And we were doing uh, capture the flag. Yeah. So you had to get into their base, take their flag, bring it back to yours. And that would give you 10 points at the end. Okay. And then the rest of the points were how many deaths there were. So it was, oh, sorry, it was lowest score wins. And I think it took 10 points off your score if you had the flag. Yeah. And it was like every time you got killed, that added a point to your, your team's score. So that was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the guy, we were talking to like the guy that was running it, who was running it with one person helping him. It was like a little small thing. But he was saying... Like, after the first match, which my team won, of course, because we were incredible. Obviously. He was saying... Yeah. He was saying, like, oh... I mean, firstly, he came up to us and went, oh, that, that team, they aren't going to win this match either. And we were like, oh, why? And he was like, oh, because I've told them how to win, but yeah. they won't listen. I, most of the time, a team will lose. I'll tell them what to do differently, and they won't do it. Why is that? He, I don't, I don't know. He was like, I always give them advice, and I always say the same things. Like, he was saying, don't leave everyone in your base, because that way... You know, it just takes one person to be lucky and shoot everyone, and you're out. Yeah. So he was saying have rings, like have people that are close defence, sort of outer defence, that sort of thing. Yeah. Which my team was doing, like in the second match, there were two of us in the base, and everyone else was sort of scouting around for the enemy. Yeah. But he was just saying, you, he tells the, them not to do the whole bunching up thing, and people just do it anyway. That's that's a bit... Like, you, you would think, like, listen to the person that does yeah. it for a living, right? Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. But, but anyway, we, so we had it, we did that, and me and one of the uh, campers were sort of a, were left at base, because I was like, I don't mind not running around. You've seen me, Liam. That makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I, was I, like, I, I, remember, I remember very fondly the time when you decided to try jogging in your jeans. Yeah, that was bad. I got a lot of chafing. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But yeah, so we we were staying in the base, yeah. and I, I sort of realised I got a little bit too into it when I effectively became uh, the strategist of the team. Okay. Not in a, you know, not my usual, because I'm different when I'm around the kids, because they won't take it if you're being a dickhead. Well, everyone else sometimes. just does. Well, no, they don't take it, but I feel less bad. If you're getting angry at me because I'm being a dick, Yeah. you know, I'm like, well, he's an adult, he needs to live with it. But if a child gets angry at you because you're being a dick... 
I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be a dick to the child. Okay, yeah. But so, like, we were having kids come back after they'd been shot, and then I knew where sort of most of our team were, and if there was gunfire coming from a certain direction, because the guns made a shooting noise. Yeah, obviously. makes sense. Yep. Uh, I was like, right, I need you to go around that way and flank that person because they need cover. And it was uh, so fucking fun, Liam. So you were strategizing, yeah, on how to beat a load of children at this game. Uh, no, no. So that, the the staff got split in half. Okay. And so half the staff were on the other team, and half the staff were on our team. Yeah. So it was equal. It's not like there was right. a bunch of children trying to win, and we were just bullying them. Okay, that's fair enough. I just wanted to make that clear for our listeners. I mean, the the split did seem slightly uneven because it was on one team there was me, uh, one of the other, uh, and three male staff members, two of whom are quite young and energetic. Dan Palmer was there. He was on my team. Okay. And you know he's very energetic. Is he one of the... Yeah, he's the young and energetic one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, On the other team were my mum, Dan's mum, an older member of male staff, and I think... Oh, and then one younger member of staff who, by the end of the game, every time she died near our base, was coming past and being like, I hate my team, they're not helping me. I would have split the mums up. Yeah, I did think it was weird that they gave us, like, all the ones... uh, And it was obviously, like, my mum and Dan's mum didn't really get into it that much. Yeah, I can... Like, they enjoyed it. Yeah. But then not anything compared to me and Dan sort of storming I I kind of... I just picture you, like, getting some mud and kind of putting it under your eyes and, like, really getting into it. Like, getting some camouflage going on. I mean, we did... So, we... So, after the capture the flag, they did a, um... Like, one final quick game, Mm -hmm. which was... A VIP game, if, you, if you've done paintballing before, Liam. You, do you know VIP? No, I've never done paintballing. Fair enough. So VIP is one person on the team is like the target. Okay, yeah. One team's job is to defend that person with their lives. Yeah. And the other team's job is to kill that person. Okay. So they did staff versus all the campers. So there were like six of us or seven versus like 19 kids. Yeah. Uh, and for that one, I did lie on the ground behind a tree for quite a while before I got killed. <laughs> Right. Whereas everyone else was just sort of standing behind trees and stuff. And I was like, well, they're all going to be expecting us to do that. So I'm going to lie down. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I felt very military. I don't think it would have uh, come across the same if you'd seen me. I'm trying to imagine. And it's not coming across very military, no. But at at the end of the day, as long as you had fun, right? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And I think all the kids seem to enjoy it. That's also probably quite important. (laughs) Yeah, no, that is. uh, That does seem quite important. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, so have you done paintballing before then? I've done paintballing quite a few times. I've never done it and I want to. If Honestly, but... if I could recommend anything, I'd recommend this instead. Yeah, this does sound more fun. Paintballing's more expensive. Like, I don't particularly mind the pain in paintballing, but it's it doesn't add anything and this takes that out anyway. Yeah, okay. Like, and for paintballing, you have to buy all your own ammo and stuff. Yeah, which all sucks, Whereas this is just like, you you just keep re- refilling it. Okay. And then, so obviously it was your birthday as well. Yep. So how did you celebrate that? Uh, They got me a cake on camp and my parents gave me a Star Wars... Because you you take your own cutlery to camp. Yeah. Like your own plate and stuff. Uh, They swapped out my bowl with a Star Wars bowl. Okay. They replaced my useful camping mug with a Darth Vader sippy cup. Right. (laughs) And gave me a giant Star Wars placemat to have on my table. Well, that sounds nice. Uh, It was. Did you feel special? Uh, Yeah, sure. That's the important thing, because I imagine that's why they did it, right? Oh, definitely. It wasn't to just be over the top yeah. and make the kids laugh at me. No, exactly. As they threw stones. And food. And said, get back in your tent, loser. This is kid time. We don't want you adults <laughs> around here. You're old now. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did argue with the kids over what 26 was. Because what do you mean? I, so, it, to me, right? Yeah, yeah. Early 20s. 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah. Mid 20s, 24, 25, 26. Mm hmm. Late 20s, 27, 28, 29. Right? I mean, I'm going to disagree with this. What What do you think? Oh, is this because you're 29? Yeah, so I'm mid 20s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if, I, if I'm. I mean, that means you're on my side then, because I was saying 26 was mid 20s, and yeah, the yeah. kids were all saying no. So you've got basically 20. To 24 is like early 20s or well, 21 to 24 is early 20s then you've got 25 to 29 which is mid 20s yeah and then you've got like the day before your 30th birthday where it's <laughs> late, late 20s <laughs> i got you 
Because you're like, it's too late to do anything about this. Yeah, now. yeah. At this point, I can't escape the inevitable. I am now in my late twenties. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Anyway, fair enough. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Sort of. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, Liam. It doesn't at all. You know, but we'll wait till you get to twenty nine, and then we'll see how you think of it. I'll be late twenties next year, mate. That's ridiculous. You'll be late twenties. Oh no, I was going to say before me, but then I realised that didn't work. No, no, you're going to be thirty. Shut up. Um. So anyway, did you do anything else? Since we last spoke, other than other than BB Camp, yeah, no, very good. Not not that I remember. I also haven't really done a lot to be honest. Because while you was away gallivanting at camp, I was just working. You know, got to that go to exciting. work, 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 and get the bills paid. Um, but I did start a new podcast without you. I know with with uh, Kat, who's been a guest on the show. She's your girlfriend. <laughs> yep, should have mentioned that as well. That's, I mean, that seems like the more <laughs> important bit of information. But if, if you think her guesting on our podcast is the main defining feature of your girlfriend, that's fine with me. Yeah, no, I just thought maybe, like, if for people who listen, they might know her more as that one that guested those two times. Maybe three. Not necessarily <laughs> that the poor woman has to put up with my shit on a daily basis. But yeah, uh, it's called Won't Grow Up Pod. Uh, we've done two episodes so far. They're both very good. Thank you very much, Jack. Um... I haven't watched the second one. It's good. Okay, well, Kat said she didn't really like it. Really? Yeah, afterwards she was like, oh, it was a bit too messy. And I was like, yeah, you realise who you're kind of hosting this with, right? Yeah, I think that's part of the charm of it. Yeah, she wants to have more of a structure in the next episode. I think I think you guys should stick to what you're doing. I think you need a theme for each episode, and yeah. then you just go. That's what I was thinking. Because I genuinely, I, I thought episode one was hilarious. That was where we were trying to come up with a name. Yeah. Okay. I'll pass that feedback on. Thank you very much. Also, the editing for uh, the opening scene being you <laughs> trying to get your cleavage on the thumbnail was also hilarious. That was that was all Kat doing with the editing. I know. I know. Yeah. I, basically, when it comes to podcasting, I leave the editing to other people. Everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got editor Brian, obviously. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Kat's doing the editing for Won't Grow Up Pod. So yeah, if, if you want to hear... I think the basic premise behind it is both me and Kat aren't like a traditional couple that are going to get engaged and pop out a load of kids and talk about taxes. Um, so if you want to hear people who are refusing to grow up and be adults, check that podcast out. I mean, that premise shouldn't be too much of a surprise for anyone that listens to this. No, no. So that. And also, uh, I've been playing a lot of PlayStation. Oh yeah? What have you been playing? Uh, so I played... The Batman Arkham City game. Yeah. Which was good. Completed it. I've got to do a little bit more to get the last two trophies, but it's annoying. So I'm having a little break from it. Fair enough. And then I finished Crash Bandicoot off. I did Crash Bandicoot 3, got the Platinum Trophy on that. And then uh, last night, right? So a while back, let me start this story from the beginning. A while back, I downloaded the Stormy... Is it Stormy Ascent? The DLC? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, oh, like, no. yeah. Uh, isn't it just called The Lost Levels? I don't know, but the level is called Stormy Ascent, right? Yeah. Um, I downloaded it, but I couldn't find it in the game, so I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Then I, I finished three, and I got to the point where I was like, right, I want to put this game away, but I want to give the DLC a little go before I do that. Because when I put okay. Anima game, I put it away, right? I have yep. like a little cupboard for them to go in. Like These are the, my, the ones I've completed. Um, You're so fucking sad. No, proud. I'm proud, Jack. Sorry, proud. Yeah. Um... So I figured out what was going wrong with that. I had to like renew some license thing. It was a weird thing in the settings. No one cares. Moving on. I started playing it last night, uh, probably about, I don't know, nine o'clock. And it took me like maybe an hour to complete the level. And I was like, oh, that's good. Now I've got to do the time trial. And the time trial basically requires you to do the whole level in one life. Okay. Took a while, Jack. How long? Um, I got to bed at 2 a.m. Okay. So I, I finished the level, my initial playthrough, where I did it in, I think, about... 30 lives uh that took an hour and then from say 10 o'clock to 2 a.m was me just replaying the level again and again doing the time trial each time trying to get a little bit further jesus there were several points where my brain went you should give up and then my other brain got stubborn and went i don't give up you should you should try it it's really really fun to give up but guess what jack i did it got got, uh, good for you i did it and now i can put the game away Start my next game, which is going to be Assassin's Creed 2, I think. What about 1? They haven't released that as a remastered version. Oh. 
Fair enough. I have played one before on the Xbox 360. If they remastered it, I'd play it. But the Assassin's Creed collection is uh, two, three, and something else. It's because it's the Ezio collection? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Liam, I have a question. Okay. You're going to play Assassin's Creed 2? Yeah. You've played Assassin's Creed 1, but you won't yeah. have 100% of it on your PS4? No. How are you going to live? Well, the thing is, it's not my fault if they haven't made it available to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it's, I it's, it's like... It's like if I, Personally, you know, I think it's your fault. Yeah, well, it's like I played The Witcher 3, but I haven't played 1 or 2. Again, I think that's your fault. I don't really care. I, I'm less fussed about doing things in order when it's games. I'm more finicky when it's films and TV shows and stuff. Are you? Some might say. No, fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I've been doing, just recording a new podcast with, with a different person and um, playing a lot of PlayStation 4. Fair enough. Which is annoying because we're going to do the DVD tally lately. and I but... saw the tweet of you getting a lot of DVDs. Yeah, and the other issue is in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. I've watched four DVDs. So it's not going to have gone down then, is what you're telling me. We'll have to wait and see, Jack. <laughs> oh, exciting. Yeah, cliffhanger for our listeners. I'll tell you what I did do, though. Go on. I've been to the cinema a couple of times. Can you give me a spoiler-free review of the things that you saw at the cinema, please? I could definitely do that. Um, I saw Detroit. Oh, that looks good. I, I like the trailer for that. Yeah, it's not out here yet, I don't believe. Um, is it not? No, I got to go to an unlimited screening. Ooh. Yes. Um, have you seen anything else from Catherine Bigelow? Probably, but I don't know. She did the Hurt Locker. I've seen. I've, I've seen Hurt Locker. She did Zero Dark Thirty. Don't think I've seen that one. She did Point Break. I don't think I've seen Point Break. Uh, and she did a movie called Near Dark, which is a vampire movie. I'm not sure if you've seen. No, I don't think so. That's really good as well. Um, this was good. It was really close to being great, Jack. Really close. Oh, okay, what did they do wrong? What was the thing that annoyed you? Um. Okay, so it, it's not that it annoyed me. It was just like the build-up was a little bit too slow. That needs to be a bit tighter. Then, like the middle section was just really good, like really enjoyable. And then, yep. like the aftermath of the middle section was also really interesting, but they didn't go into it in enough detail. I didn't think. Ah, uh, okay. So I kind of felt like they needed to tighten up the beginning to allow them to have more time with like the later middle section. And then the ending, for some reason, like, all the way through, it's essentially, like, for anyone who isn't aware, it's about this event that happened during, like, a load of riots, I want to say in the 60s? Yeah. Um, and it's all about this, like, this, like, period of time and, and, like, the different kind of, like, social struggles. And it all kind of comes to a head on this one night um, where something happens. I don't want to say too much because I'm spoiler free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously that one night is what takes like the bulk of the attention and it's really good. And then the aftermath, like the immediate aftermath is also really interesting, but then by the end of the film, all the way along, you've been following like several characters. The okay. end just seems to focus on one character for some reason. And it it's, right. it then is like, wait a second. Are you try- like is this a, the, the a biopic of this one person? Because that's not the feeling I was getting throughout the rest of the film where, like, lots of people were involved. Yeah, yeah, so it just sort of left everyone else hanging sort of thing. Yeah, it was a bit weird. Um, It was a bit like, I think, Straight Outta Compton did something quite similar. Okay. And I don't know why they didn't kind of... I don't know. I don't know why the ending decided to just, like, nail it onto one person. Didn't quite make sense. But it was still good. Three and a half out of five. And that's a high three and a half out of five. I would recommend going to see it. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it looked looked good. Just be wary. Amanda did tweet us uh, saying uh, she had to walk out of it because uh, there's some of the like handheld shaky cam stuff going on. Oh yeah, I, I saw. I think I saw her tweet. I'm I'm all right with that kind of stuff. Okay, well that's right. But any listeners that are listening and are maybe like on the fence, if you don't do well with that sort of thing, just to be wary. Because the last enough. thing you want to do is pay like twelve quid for a cinema ticket and then have to leave. Yeah, because it because of the way it's been filmed. Fair, fair enough, Liam. Um, and then I also saw, just yesterday, uh, we went to see The Hitman's Bodyguard. That's the one with Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. And Samuel Jackson? Well done, Jack. I'm, I'm just an absolute hero. I am genuinely impressed by that. Thank you. Um, honestly, it's average. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking it would be. Yeah, so basically, the, the premise, uh, Samuel L. Jackson plays a hitman, 
Uh, Ryan Reynolds has to get him to court by a certain deadline. People want to stop the hitman because he's going to testify against someone. That's the premise. The thing is, the action in it's quite good. It's the comedy that lets it down, surprisingly. Oh, really? Yeah, and like Ryan Reynolds is funny. We've seen him do funny. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't... The script just wasn't strong enough for the comedy elements, I don't think. It, if it had just been more action and less comedy, I think it might have been better. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, two and a half out of five, but that's a low two and a half. Like, it okay. just got it, because I was feeling yeah. generous. Uh, that's everything for what I've done at the cinema. Have you done any reading, Jack? I have, Liam. Oh, we've got some book reviews. I'm excited. Only one. Okay. So, I, for some reason, I usually read quite a lot on camp, but I didn't finish the third book in Scott Sigler's Infected trilogy. Okay. So I've only got Infected book two, which is called Contagious, to talk about. Right. It's good. See, you were doing really well in the last couple of episodes of your book reviews, and now I feel like we're backtracking a bit. Can Can you tell me more about why it's good? Yep. I can, Liam. So, in book one, they established that this infection thing exists that aliens brought, if you remember, Liam. Yeah, yeah, of course. Aliens sent the uh, infection to us. Yeah, of and course. in the end of book one, they sort of deal with the first wave of it. Yeah. And then book two picks up pretty quickly after the first one. Yeah. I think it's, you know, within a week or something. Okay. Uh, the, You get all the characters that were interesting get back into it and it sort of expands on a lot of the relationships the characters are building yeah there's a really interesting plot between someone in the first book who was a bit of a baddie Mm -hmm. and the person in the first book who was the goody yeah and there's like a a friendship that builds between them and you get this really interesting look into how both their characters think yeah uh that like it that's in that's cool i like all the character stuff and then i like the fact that instead of just being the same infection again the sort of alien entity that is making the infection happen is like, okay, cool. They know how to deal with it. I need to change. So it yeah. introduces this new type of infection that becomes contagious, hence the name of the book, Liam. It makes sense. So it adds this other element to it. And like you end, you get a new character introduced who is infected, who but sort of she can lead other infected people and make them do what she wants. Okay. And she starts to rebel against the aliens. Like not, not in a... I'm going to kill the aliens, but in like, a, I don't need to listen to you anymore. I have all yeah. these people. More defiance. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of a cool angle on it. Yeah. What's the interest? Different. What's the third book called? Uh, Pandemic. Okay. So we can kind of predict what's going to happen in that one then. I mean, so here's the thing, right? The interest, I'm not going to say any spoilers or anything, but yeah. the interesting thing is that the end of book two yeah. is not a twist per se, but it's a shock. Like stuff happens okay. that you don't expect to happen. Yeah. And also happens in such a way that I was like, how the fuck is there a third book? That's interesting, then. So, so yeah, that's... Um, the writing style of this one, because obviously I've, I've read Nocturnal before by this guy, Scott Sigler. Yeah. Um, and I think, if I remember rightly, you said the last book, so the first one in this trilogy, was more uh, a little bit more like horror than Nocturnal was? Yeah, it's, it's less because Nocturnal had that whole feeling of like, oh, there are monsters. Yeah. And they look like giant snakes and giant wolves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the sort of the horror element to it stays pretty good in this one. Okay. And is what kind of are the elements that you're enjoying the most of, of this trilogy so far? I mean, at the moment, it's probably the characters. Okay. Like, that's the sort of draw for me. Yeah. It's interesting as well that the books are like, I don't know, the time period between them is quite short, but you still get a lot of character development off, I don't know what you call off page, sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in between the books. So then you're sort of playing catch up. You're like, oh what's happened that's led these characters to this point. Okay. I don't know, it's interesting. It's, yeah, it's like, again, if you enjoyed Nocturnal, if anyone read Nocturnal or wants to, or enjoyed Infected, it's worth reading Contagious because it's really good. How would you kind of pitch this trilogy, like an elevator pitch? So say, say someone's listening and they've not they've not heard of this guy before, they've not read any of his stuff before. Yeah. You've got like two sentences to try and get their interest. I'd probably say it's a good... <laughs> yeah example no i don't know it's it's sort of i want to say it's like zombies but it's not okay so it's kind of like a zombie infection story yeah but without the stupidity of zombies okay so it, give me a like if you like this you might like this kind of comparison if you like 28 days later you might like this okay cool when you when you said like not stupid zombies that's what my mind first went to was 28 yeah. days later yeah, I mean, this is different to that, but it's yeah. got similar vibes in places. 
Okay, cool. Out of five? Uh, I can't remember what I gave the first one. I think this one's better than the first one. So whatever the first one was, plus a bit. Plus plus 0.5. Right, excellent. I also, though, Liam... Yeah? I watched something. Not at the cinema. Okay. But I want to talk about it anyway, because it's something you've you've told me I would like. Okay. So yesterday I was at Tom's. Yeah. And we watched Life. Did I, did I tell you you'd like that? Yeah, I think so. Because I did the cinema review of it. I said it wasn't very good. Well, it was, it was average, I think. Three out of five I gave it. I think you might have said it's average, but it's your kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I agree with that. It's average, but also my kind of thing. Yeah. It, it was very... Um, it, I can't remember how I described it in the initial review, but it's, it was very similar to like something, but not quite as good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it all over. Okay. Um, but I'm pleased you liked it. I liked it a bit. It's three, three out of five. Yeah, so we, we kind of agree then on the score. Yeah. Fair enough. That's it. That's all I've done, Liam. Excellent. Um, so that's it for catching up with Jack and Liam. Jesus, we're powering through the show, Liam. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's fantastic. Housekeeping next? Housekeeping. Uh, I've got two things on housekeeping this week, Jack. Oh, go on. What have you been doing? Uh, I finished watching Ozark. Okay. So we've watched all of the first season now. Um... So if I remember rightly, I think in the review I was saying it was it was okay, but it just never like quite had like that like special element. Yep, yep, I, I, I remember you saying that. That's, that's kind of how it went throughout. Um, I I did really like I loved Ruth throughout. She was great. If there cool. was a special element, it would probably be her. To be honest, um, I still like even throughout. I I kind of struggled with Jason Bateman in the lead role, and it's not that he isn't good. It's more the baggage that I'm bringing. Like I'm so familiar with him in Arrested Development that I struggle to just not to just see him as this other character. And there was a few mannerisms that kind of like slipped, like overlapped between the two characters. Oh, okay. Well, that's I imagine quite confusing because they are very different shows. Yeah, exactly. So, like when, for example, when he's like he might call his son like Pow or Champ or something. Yeah. That to me just feels like him talking to George Michael. Yeah. 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 Um, and like he'll do a like a, a a like very kind of subtle wink, where like his whole face doesn't change; he just winks. And again, that's a very Arrested Development like thing that I'm used to seeing in that show. Yeah. So, but I, I can't necessarily fault the show or Jason Bateman for that because Jason Bateman is good. It's just my familiarity with something else affected my viewing of this show. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a tricky one because it is. I don't know when does it when does that not become. Yeah, like who, who's something you have to rate? Who, yeah, who's kind of at fault there? You know, is yeah, it, is it you because you can't separate the characters, or is it is it something that Jason Bateman is doing where he's not kind of defining the characters differently enough? Yeah, or even the script writers for yeah. not thinking about that kind of thing and being like, oh, he calls him power in this scene. Yeah, exactly. Um, th- there was also like a couple of moments where characters it felt like they acted more in service of the plot than like an actual character driven motivation yep yep um it was still enjoyable i think overall the season i'd probably give three and a half out of five okay that's that's yeah above average yeah like, i think it, i'd be interested if you carried on watching it um what you think of the rest of it yeah uh, and then i did something as, as a birthday treat for you jack oh thanks liam what was it so right. it's a special like this is this is your birthday present from me um i so regular listeners, old school listeners, cast your mind all the way back to episode three. Episode three? Episode three. Okay. Can you remember the culture swap from episode three? Fuck no. I got you, this was when we were doing two culture swaps an episode, and okay, I got yep. you to watch uh, The Trip on Netflix. Okay. And you got me to watch Attack on Titan. Holy shit, did you watch the rest of Attack on Titan? I haven't done the rest of it yet. Oh. Because it's been so long, I had to go back and redo the first six episodes. Got you, got you. I think I'm now up to something like episode 10. Okay, that's impressive. I'm I'm going to stick with it and get through it, um, but Kat doesn't like me watching it when she's in the room, because she just thinks it's a load of yelling in Japanese, and obviously that's annoying to her <laughs> when you're not reading <laughs> the subtitles. Yeah, but yeah, I can see that, yeah. Yeah. So I have to like pick when I watch it... Um, Here's the thing, because I listened back to my initial review for it, right? Yep. And I really hated Evan when I first watched it, who's like yes, the main Yes, I remember character. you hating him. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I knew his fate that was coming, but I found him less annoying in the earlier episodes this time. Yep, yep. Then, so I'm going to 
do spoilers for the first six episodes because we've done a culture swap on it, but I won't yeah, spoil it after fair. that. Right. So in episode five, I believe it is, he gets eaten by a titan, right? Yep. And I remember, say, like, because when I listened back, uh, I was saying, I was curious what happened next. Like, what's, what are they going to do now? Because the focus seemed to shift to this other character, Mikasa, who was a lot more interesting. Yep. Um, oh, and the other guy, I can't remember his name, that he was described as a daffodil. Yeah. Uh, shit, well, I can't remember his name either. But I liked him as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, listening back, I was like, okay. I, at the time, I wanted to watch the next couple, and then just, I didn't. Um, the next couple are good. Uh, I I liked them. The issue is that ep- the last episode I watched, which I believe was episode ten, it resolves that big cliffhanger thing of what happened to Evan. Yeah, I didn't like the resolution of that, Jack. I keep going because it gets better. Yeah. So the next episode does sound intriguing, right? Where they talk about, um, they kind of talk a little bit more. That there's a little like summary of what the episode's about, and it's all about yeah. essentially what you find out at how that affects the character. Yeah. 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 So I am curious what they're going to do. But yeah, I've, so that's my birthday treat to you, is I'm watching more Attack you're, on Titan. You're actually watching the rest of Attack on Titan. Yeah. Because you, you, thank, thanks, you buddy. strongly recommended that I do that. Yeah, because I felt that the first six episodes, I enjoy them, but I feel like the rest of the series is better than that. Listen, I, I definitely enjoyed them more watching them again, but I still like wasn't in love with it or anything. Yeah. Um. And I still, I still feel like Mikasa is a stronger character to be following than Evan. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't really wrap that. I'm afraid. Yeah, no, it's a difficult one to wrap. Yeah, I guess you could have sent me a card with your thoughts in it on the other episodes, but that would have been weird. Yeah, no, we'll just, you know, there'll be more housekeeping where I watch more because I don't think I'm going to like whiz through it speedily, but I'll kind of keep you posted with my thoughts. Okay. Um. We got some tweets. Who's tweeted us, Liam? So Amanda tweeted us. To be honest, just this... very, very quickly, Liam. Yeah, I don't want to be embarrassed, so I'm just going to assume that all of the listeners have tweeted me "Happy Birthday" and just you don't have to read them out on the show. It's fine. I know that they've all tweeted it, so you can just go past them. Cool, I'll do that. Um, Thanks. And done. So <laughs> <laughs> Amanda tweeted us. Uh, now this was actually before our last episode, but I forgot to read it. Um, okay. She said, I want to hear what Jack thinks about Liam's new project with Kat and how long until Jack starts a spin off podcast. Uh, I hate that you're doing a new podcast without me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to immediately start three spin off podcasts to compete with you. Okay. Uh, one of them's going to be called Not Growing Up. Brilliant. I like that. One of them will be called Don't Grow Up. Yeah. And one of them will be called Won't Get Any Younger. I love it. Um, the, the funny thing is, you, you are working on a spin-off podcast, but it also features me. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That doesn't really count, because we're doing no. a spin-off podcast with both of us on it. Yeah, we need to start working more on that. What we should do is we should reverse the name of this podcast, and then people will be like, oh, okay, it's a spin-off of Nerd on Nerd, so we'll call it Nerd on Nerd. Um, Kat tweeted us, co-host on the Wenkwell podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, she was a guest on this and also my girlfriend. I think those are the right, oh. <laughs> th- that's the right order of priority. Oh, I, I just know her as a guest on our show. <laughs> uh, she said, just listen to the podcast and I can confirm Liam is in fact weird in case there was any doubt there. I hadn't yep. read this tweet before reading it out. I don't really know what she's talking about. I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of weird stuff last episode. Okay. And she said, and Jack's view on ketchup with roast dinner is wrong. Cat doesn't know. And then she said, traffic lights are not arrogant and Liam is ludicrous, which is bullshit. I mean, that's true. That bit is true. Uh, and then she said, I might enjoy the rest of the Bill Hodges trilogy, but I tend to be less of a fan of Stephen King's supernatural stuff. Uh, book two doesn't do it that much. Book two is very similar to book one. And then she followed it up saying, especially when the rest of the story is clearly another genre like crime slash thriller, then it introduces supernatural stuff later. Yeah, so she might not like book three that much. And then she said, I am enjoying Jack's more critical reviews of books. Fair enough. So that's good. Uh, Amanda said Jack should definitely see the big sick in the cinema if he hasn't already. Did do? You didn't do a review of it on the show, though. Did I not? No, I don't believe you did. It was a beautiful film. I loved it. Very good. Um, And then she said, what's the term for a nerd-on-nerd fan who enjoys both Jack and Liam equally, not a Liamette or Jack-off? It's a a Liam-off at that point. Okay, cool. Um... And she said, I totally agree with Liam about the annoying trope of the wife slash girlfriend being a nag and an obstacle for the male lead to overcome, which is one of the uh, issues I had with Ozark. 
Yep, 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 I remember. And she said, there are so many other obstacles in life. I get so tired of women being portrayed as the nagging spouse when usually in real life they're supportive. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, Yeah, okay. So you responded to Amanda's tweet about uh, the big sick saying he has it's awesome. That was by Jack Kempster. I remember that. And then Amanda said, yay, looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the next episode. Okay, it's a really good film. I cried like a baby. Did you? I think I did. I cried a little bit. At what bit? Like, without spoiling anything, if you can. Uh, the ending. Okay, yeah. Like, the, the not the end end, but before the end, when the when when good stuff should happen and it doesn't. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Any other tweets? Uh, no, so it was just Amanda saying, I forgot to ask which bit of Liam's anger led to the title of this episode. Yeah, so that was confusion. That's my bad, listeners. Yeah. It was the uh, ten-minute-long rant about why Princess Mononoke was the worst thing I've ever done to Liam. Which, to be fair, I did ask you to cut. Uh, yeah, but it was too funny. Yeah. Uh, Amanda also is livid at you. Go on. She said, by the way, this is forcing me into a hard choice. I've never seen Mononoke and was saving to do an episode on it, but I never miss your episodes. Oh, sorry, Amanda. So I just wanted to say, this is all Jack's fault. I'm sorry, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Did she reply to that? Nah. She's, just, she's livid at you as well, I think. I'm sorry, Amanda. I mean, it's going to take more than I hope that. you enjoyed Princess Mononoke if you watched it. Well, yeah, that was it for our correspondence. Fair enough. So, on to the main event. On to the main event. I'm ready, Liam. I'm ready to fight you. Okay, so we're going to take our tops off and fight. Is that how you fight? Yeah. Well, I, I take everything off. I mean, that's... See, I've always thought that it, that's a bold move. It's a good, like, what's he doing? I don't understand what's happening. And then the other, the other move that I've you know i would love to be able to do is spontaneously vomiting on yourself yeah no i don't do that i because my my fighting style is very um greek okay got you you're a greco-roman wrestling sort of man yeah so i just get completely naked um a little then, bit of oil just a little bit if, if it's the hand sometimes yeah, these no, fights, yeah. oh yeah i mean know. if it's a fight you're not gonna go looking for oil exactly um i'm Fair. not gonna abandon the fight uh, and then basically the main goal is to get your willy in their face I mean that's fair. What if they? Ooh, what if they bite? That's the risk, and that's also part of the the skill involved in fighting. Got you. <laughs> is is getting your willy in their face without them biting it? Because that means you've won. That's true. Fair enough. So, um, culture swap. Swap my culture. Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli. I didn't have time to watch all the other Studio Ghibli films leading up to it. I just watched Princess Mononoke. You had three weeks. It was two hours and fourteen minutes long, Jack. It was. I mean, that could that could be a bad or a good thing, Liam. I'm I'm waiting for you to kind of talk about. So so this was your suggestion. This was your birthday thing. You could have chosen literally anything within okay, reason. Okay, okay, all right, I've got you. Yeah. So the reason I picked Princess Mononoke, Liam. Yes. It's one of the first anime movies I watched. I think from Studio Ghibli. It might even be the first Studio Ghibli film I watched. Okay. Uh, and I fell in love with it when I watched it. Yeah. I just, I love the art style, I love the story, I love all of it. And like, I think part of that is nostalgia now from back when I first watched it and it being like a gateway into anime for me. Yeah. But I picked it for you because I wanted to pick something that I loved. Yeah. So that sort of, you know, I love all the other Studio Ghibli films, but I was like, I need to pick something that I really, really like. Yeah, that makes sense. That, but also something that I think you would enjoy. Okay. So, the, you know, I went, Princess Mononoke, it's not the outrageous shit that you hate. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you're always like bitching and moaning when I pick an anime, and the like. I, I'm at, just picture Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I feel like that's the kind of anime that you are definitely not a fan. I I know you're not a fan of that, right? I've never seen it. But that's the you know when they're like just superpowers and like firing beams out their hands. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've honestly I've never seen an anime like that. I don't think so. I couldn't tell that's you if enough. I liked but, it or not. All right, okay. Well, maybe we'll try Dragon Ball Z at some point. Anyway. So I thought, I'll pick this. This yeah. doesn't have that, you know, the crazy superpowers or anything. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of it. Does any Studio Ghibli have that? No, Studio Ghibli doesn't. But then, like, a lot of their stuff is more fantastical. Like, Princess Mononoke's fantasy elements are the sort of time period mix-up it's set in. Yeah. And the gods. And hit that little, that, like, curse thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, sorry, I, I had a question, but I've forgotten it. Okay. Just very quickly, I'll point out there will be spoilers for Princess Mononoke... If yes. you haven't watched it, you really, really should have. It's so good. Please go watch it. I know, but I was going to say, this isn't actually my first Studio Ghibli film. No, I know. I know, because you uh, said on last episode that you watched uh, Grave of the Fireflies. Yes. 
out you that's the other studio ghibli film that you've seen before doing your big run through yeah oh and uh whatever lupin's thing no i never got around to it did i did you not why the fuck did we watch so many lupin films we only watched one i think and it was yeah, just bonkers it was ridiculous put me off watching the rest <laughs> yeah understandably yeah so yeah so this was my second studio ghibli film i believe yeah okay um is that all of the reasons why you wanted to do it they're like the main reasons okay uh, I'll start with the positives. Okay. I thought it was gorgeous to look at. Yep. It's really, really, like, just a lovely looking film. The animation's really good. I mean, that's, that's like, true to all Studio Ghibli films. I've only got one other to base it off I of. So. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's like, the, the level of detail they go into on their artwork is incredible. Like, when I was watching it again, I was like, I was thinking that basically every every sort of panel, you could give me pretty much any cell of a Studio Ghibli film. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is art, thank you. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. It is very uh, artistic and lovely to look at. Um, I liked the story. I thought yeah. it, it was... A, the, the kind of themes were a little bit on the nose. I yeah, felt. it's very obvious in where it's aiming. Yeah, that whole, like, nature, respecting the environment, that kind of aspect to it. Um, one of the things that threw me a little bit is I, I wasn't too sure when it was supposed to be set i wasn't sure if it was supposed to be like set in a like kind of made up mystical land if you will Mm -hmm. or if it was actually like something supposed to be somewhere Uh, because i was throwing like i think they refer to china at one point oh possibly yeah yeah um and you've got like the samurais and stuff so it's it's got that like historical period feel to it as well yeah so i think from what i read afterwards Mm -hmm. it's um the three sort of tribes in the film, so the the his lot, the yeah. I can't remember what their name is. Uh, you don't see a then, lot of them. No, you don't. They're in it very briefly. Yeah. Then the Iron Town people. Yeah. And the samurai. Yeah. Lot, yeah. They're all like they weren't actually around at the same time, but they're so it's sort of a a, a fantastical meeting of those three time periods. Yeah, because I but I think it is meant to be Japan. I could be wrong. But I believe, like, Samurais and Muskets didn't exactly knock about at the same sort of time. Have you seen The Last Samurai? No. Well, they did. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, said, I, think, I said so. I could be wrong. This is... I am I am not a history buff. I am even less of a history buff about Japan. Yeah. Here is what... Here is Jack's thoughts and maybe memories, but he's not entirely sure, so don't ever use this if you get asked questions about ancient Japan. Okay. Here are what I think I know that I probably don't. Yeah. I believe... That Japan was a really isolationist country. Yeah. For years. Yeah. So while the rest of the world was sort of de- started to develop muskets and stuff, mm-hmm. Japan was basically closed off, and d- so that stuff didn't travel there. Yeah. And the sort of fall of the samurai and that time period of them, you know, the the sort of Japan that you picture when you picture ancient Japan. Yeah. That that sort of fell when they opened up to trade and Christianity moved in, uh, and sort of. They traded in muskets and stuff, and that sort of brought an end to the whole samurai era. Oh, okay, because I always picture like the samurai stuff being like way before like gunpowder. No, I, I, and all I, I that might sort of be stuff. wrong, but I'm I'm pretty positive that's how it happened. Was like the rest of the world had sort of got to muskets, maybe yeah. not muskets, but you know, early firearms. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I I feel like samurai is is a phase a lot of like uh, boys go through. Oh fuck yeah! And I I never quite had that myself. Really. Yeah, um, like I think the only other like samurai film that I've seen was uh, earlier this year or late last year. I watched Seven Samurai. Oh, okay. Um, which I would recommend to you. I think after yeah, I after watching it. this, I think you'd really enjoy it. Fair enough. Um, so yeah. Anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, I thought it was totally fine. Uh, I I don't really have any complaints about it. Um, yeah. Okay. No, that's not true. I, I did feel like the pacing got a little bit slow. Uh, just over halfway into it, I think. What it's, bit's that? It's the bit where he's basically recovering. Okay, yeah, yeah. The the pacing just slows down a little bit. I'm like, yep, yeah, I get what you're doing, but I need us to kind of just go a little bit quicker. Like, it's just a bit slow for me at that moment. But yeah, I liked I liked the stuff at the steel town. I liked the um the ladies with their bosoms. Okay. I mean, that's not just me, right? Like, they were very um busty. Yeah, yeah, they were. It's also bosom. Oh, bosom. My bad. No problem. Um, yeah, they are very busty ladies in that. Just that one scene for some reason. Yeah, well, it's... Me- yeah, 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 that's fair. Um, 
which yeah I, I but i liked i liked that kind of it's not like a culture clash but that culture exchange of, of him coming from his little tribe and then meeting these like these ladies who are working really hard and he has a little go at the the steel thing it's uh, iron it's iron Liam. that's iron. the thing iron and thing he, it's bellows that he has a go on yeah i, I just liked that little scene yeah no it's good um, and them all kind of being flustered around him and embarrassed, and because he's gorgeous, as he's, they say, he's handsome and stuff. Yeah, um, he's a good-looking boy. Um, Apparently so. Yeah, I liked the whole like the animation, like right at the beginning with all of the right. You're gonna be pedantic and say they're not worms, but they look like worms that are all just like swarming over the boar. Yeah, no, that's yeah. I I like that. That just looked amazing. Yeah, that's really well done. Yeah. Um, one thing that did surprise me, in all honesty, is I was 100% like going into this movie knowing nothing about it beforehand beside the title. Very surprised that Princess Mononoke was not the main character. Yes. Um, apparently, apparently Miyazaki, uh, there were two names that were floated for this film. One was Princess Mononoke and one was The Tale of Ashitaka or something, or The Legend of Ashitaka. Okay. And he wanted the other one, and then the other guy that, I can't remember what his name is, damn it, he... Went wanted Princess Mononoke and Princess Mononoke ended up winning in the end. Because it's not even a name that's used a lot in the film. It's, I think it's the na- yeah no it's the name that San the the girl who's living in the woods with the wolves yeah she has given herself or has like self titled herself Princess Mononoke yeah but she's very but yeah rarely actually referred to as that yes she's called Wolf Girl Ashitaka calls her San yeah and there's a there's a few and and the the wolves call her San as well yep um and it I'll be honest like there was it took me maybe. Like a, a couple of times here, and it's a f- kind of cotton on. Oh, that's her name, sort of thing. Got you. But like, it it, it was one of those things. Like, it, it wasn't necessarily explained, but it didn't need to be. It was it was pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I just liked it. I you know I don't really have a lot of complaints. I mean, the thing it. is, you're not sounding that positive, Liam. No, like I liked it, but it didn't blow me away. Or anything. Like the animation, the art did, but like the story and all of the other elements to it. I thought they were just fine. At times, it reminded me a little bit of Moana. Okay. Um, which I, I really enjoyed that. Um, like, more towards the end, when you've got, like, the big Nightwalker thing looking for his head and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, that element is what made me think of more, like, the ending of Moana. Got you, got you. Um, especially with, like, the whole, like, rebirth and regrowth afterwards as well. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. But, yeah, I, I, I've, I really liked... I can't remember its name, but the... Um, so Ashitaka's got this like red elk. Yes. Fuck. Uh, it begins with a Y. It's, yeah, it's like Yaku, Yaku, something like that. Yeah. Or Yaku or Yaku. Yeah. For for, for like, I I think they did a really good job of giving um like an animal personality without like giving it dialogue. Yes. Because some it, of the animals it has do personality have without even it doesn't seem like intelligent either. Like not not you know it doesn't have an um the Disney horses level of intelligence where it's like. Oh, silly you without speaking it like yeah yeah it's yeah, yeah. believably animalistic while still feeling like it has a personality yes exactly um i like that there was one bit right um where uh, i believe san takes his like um sort of riding gear off like he has the mask with the reins and stuff yeah and he's like you're free now and then i'm pretty sure in the next scene when when you see him again it that's all back on him Oh, I didn't notice that. Maybe. Yeah, and I, I just like I, was, I just had this image of him just go like trotting Putting off into the woods. On. Yeah, because <laughs> that's really not explained. Um, I don't know if if there's like a cut scene or something there that did explain it, or if they just kind of put, like fuck it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't notice that. Um, again, not really an issue. Uh, I thought like the the villain Lady Eboshi was interesting. Yeah, I think I think it does a really good job of. I think that's one of the things that when I first watched it, I thought was really cool is the fact that. There's not particularly a good or evil side in this. Like I know that the the, the humans are meant to be the sort of baddies. If yeah, you will. I mean, but cut, like cutting off it's a god's never, head is probably yeah, yeah. But it's never done in like a you 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 get I'm given doing reasons as to why they're doing it that makes sense. And it, and even then, like the forest spirit is all dear god, depending on if you watch the sub or the dub. Yeah, uh, like. I feel like there's this air of the animals are also, or the the, the spirit gods are sort of in the wrong too. Yeah, because yeah, because they like the whole thing is they're trying to attack the humans. Like the the boars are just sort of almost mindlessly attacking the humans. Yeah, and the, and the like the Whoa. monkeys as well aren't big fans of the humans. The monkeys were spooky. 
they were. The other thing that was spooky was um, oh, they've got a name, but the little forest like sprites. Uh, the Kadamas. Yeah, I thought they were. Kind I of love creepy. them. They're so adorable. I thought they were kind of creepy. If one appeared in front of me in the woods, I would cry and just collapse and yes. die. But also, this this is a PG film, right? And within like the first maybe ten minutes, a guy shoots someone's hands off with an arrow and beheads someone with an arrow. Yes, I'll be honest, the first time I watched it, that was one of the reasons I was like, oh, I might like this film a lot. Yeah, like, personally, wouldn't have given it a PG rating. No, 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 12. 12 A, yeah, definitely. Um, But yeah, I I kind of want to hear more from you about why you like it so much, because I am very much like, it was fine, I enjoyed it, but it, it didn't, like, wow me, you know? Like, I didn't hate it, and the two hour 14 kind of ticked along nicely, and I didn't, apart from that one little bit in the middle, I didn't really feel the length at all. I was just very much like, it was okay. I, th- I don't know. I don't know how to describe why I like it so much. So much. Okay, because I, just... I, I, we heard from, um, well, I heard from Mark, who, you know, has been on the show before, and he, he was saying uh, he found Princess Mononoke a bit slow going, and he, he was saying uh, maybe not what he would recommend is like an introduction to Studio Ghibli. But that's not what I was doing. No, I know. I was just saying, like, I think he was saying like, Spirited Away was, in his opinion, better. Yeah, 100%. Like, if, if, if it was, if we were doing a, like, I really need to get Liam into anime, that's all I care about. Yeah. And I think I I, pro- I would pick Studio Ghibli, because I think they're incredible. Yeah, that makes sense. And then if you look at their films that, you know, are the best ones that you would recommend to someone, Spirited Away is definitely up there. Yeah, I really top. want to see Ponyo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? I've not seen that. Okay. I've not seen all of the Studio Ghibli. I've seen a lot of the early stuff, and then some of the newer stuff. I realised, because I sent you a text, you know, that I, I own something like seven of them on Blu-ray already. Just haven't got around to yeah, this was when yet. you were debating buying a £400 box set. I decided not to in the end. Yeah, that's probably sensible. Yeah, I was very smart. But, but yeah, I think, so part of Princess Mononoke and my love of it is the sort of nostalgia, like I was saying, of the fact that it's one of the first ones I saw. Yeah. It like, it, I think it's also good, because, you know, in England and America, when we see animes that you know the animes that we like grew up with so like pokemon and yeah. that those Digimon. Sort of, yeah, yeah that sort of thing and then there are others like there's naruto and stuff yeah they avatar they're definitely what was that avatar is that one yeah uh although avatar i think is english is it yeah i, I don't think it's a translated japanese show oh i didn't know it's made that. by cartoon network i didn't know that but yeah so the, like when they get trans translated maybe not pokemon so much that definitely is a kid's show but there's yeah there's an element of you know there's a bias in the Western world, that cartoons are for kids. I think that I know that, that they're not. Is... I know that you get things that aren't. Yeah, but there's definitely if you look at like the '90s and stuff. Yeah, that I my think... dad wasn't going out being like, "Let's go watch some cartoon movies." I can't wait. These are going to be so awesome and aimed at me. No, I I think that where that started shifting is probably with Family Guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's because yeah, like you you had South Park obviously before that which is very obviously adult but I still think like that was seen as a kind of anomaly and it was then I think Family Guy that started kind of shifting that attitude of being like cartoons are for kids yeah but anyway we had that right yeah 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 so then when you see something like Princess Mononoke which like you say is a PG mm-hmm. but then it has that like that level of gore where someone is having their arm shot off and someone gets yep. his head shot off with an arrow yeah and like it's not it's not pandering to kids like this film isn't no. like hey the environment's in trouble let's go save it it's sort of a darker story yeah about the environment and stuff and i think that's you know when you're a kid sometimes you don't want something to be pandering to you and be like hey you're a kid fucking have all this childish shit yeah okay like i think a lot of the times you know production companies and stuff do underestimate what kids know like their level of intelligence no yeah i'd agree with that I, I i definitely didn't feel like this was um uh, it, 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 to me, it felt like this was made the way they wanted to make it, and yeah. the fact that it was somewhat suitable for a younger audience was just a happy coincidence. It didn't feel like that was the primary focus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, is there anything else about it that you'd like to discuss? I think I think there's some interesting stuff to be said for the way it deals with, um, you know, like uh, women's roles in society and stuff, especially when you look at those time periods. Yeah, and not that even was just actually, them, like also, sorry, yeah, yeah. that was something that I did think of when I was watching it. I was like, I can't quite tell what stance it's taking here because it has this like, so so Lady Eboshi does kind of like oppress the women essentially. 
Yeah, she's she's using them for yeah military and labor. But then she does also somewhat empower them by being like, no, like there's a there's a moment where she's hunting the deer god or whatever it's called in the dubbed version, um, where she lives like the steelworks uh, under siege, and she's like, yep, yeah, no, the women can handle that, which I yeah, thought was yeah. quite like an interesting way of portraying it if you know what i mean and like i thought her as well being the villain being quite intelligent um i I just couldn't quite get a read on this if what i liked about it is it didn't have a definitive pro or anti like female stance it it was just each character has their own motivations yeah well I, i think the film itself is obviously pro uh well because of uh san yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, but, I'm more but I know with... what you mean. Like, because yeah, Boshi herself isn't obviously like the same with the lepers as well. Where yeah, you know, back in those days, lepers were just shunned and put in colonies and just left to die, effectively. Yeah, and like, so what she's doing to them is kind of evil. She's forcing them to work long hours to make these guns. Yeah, but also she does seem to sort of care about them. Well, she's trying to find a cure for them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's like this weird mix of. It sort of stays true to the whole film being a little bit like maybe it's not it's not a clear cut. Yeah, it, it's answer. not black and white, which I like. Yeah. and again, that's a very like unchild friendly thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Also, let's save the environment. That's probably it, Liam. Yeah, which is you know, I, I can't argue with that statement. No, it's a good statement. Yeah, I, I just wish it was listened to more. To be honest, maybe we should get everyone, you know, President Donald Trump, to sit down and watch Princess Mononoke. I don't think that would help. Here's a good question, Liam, and maybe it's a new segment we can introduce on the show, which is, so culture swap, yeah. we sort of give our views, but yeah. then we sort of guess how Donald Trump would feel about them. Um, I think he would think that both sides were very bad. Um, you, you had, obviously, Ashitaka and San, yep. who were causing a lot of violence. True. Uh, but then you also had the the uh, iron workers, who, who were just trying to, you know, just trying to get jobs, just trying to work. Uh, but some of them were a bit violent in return. Yeah. So I think I think there's definitely many sides to this argument. I mean, we all need oil. You know, there was yeah, oil mean, falling he... from the sky. Yeah. Um, that's that's something we can only dream of, really. I imagine he's annoyed. He would be annoyed by the ending with yeah. the oil being stopped. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. That, that's that's how I picture it. But also, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Hundred percent. Um, out of five, I give it a four point five. But okay. I know you won't. That's not, yeah. No, I give it a three and a, no, sorry, a three out of five. Average? A, a little bit better than average. I thought three was your average. Uh, it depends. Okay. 2.5 can also be an average. Got you. But three, three out of five, in, in this case, a little bit better than average. I mean, that's to me a positive because the other animes you've watched, apart from Grave of the Fireflies. And Barefoot Game, which I keep banging on about. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to do that because. Out of all of the animes you've made me watch so far, it's just so different. Yeah, so yeah. That's, but that's the thing. I know you like that kind of anime, so I'm trying to expand your horizons. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm really excited for your thoughts because now I've, I'm starting to see all the animes you're watching. I'm very excited to see what you I mean, you I've also seen... I've, I've seen... I can't remember which one I've seen, but I've seen one of them. One of what? Uh, Grave of the Fireflies or Barefoot Again. Probably Grave of the Fireflies, right? Probably, yeah. Because it's, it's a Studio Ghibli one. I watch other things. Yeah, no, but I mean, uh, it, yeah, I think I might have gotten to it in the when I was working my way through. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm just. I think the thing that annoyed me the most was the fact that you made me break my pact with the listeners. I sort of don't care anymore. We dealt with it last time. I think you were completely unreasonable. Well, so um, we'll do barefoot again soon. I think. Okay. Just so then we, you know, at the moment I've kind of quite deliberately gated off anime until we do this like one yeah 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 so the sooner we do it then we can like unleash the gate okay um you mister forgot to do the dvd tally i was literally about to bring it up okay because we normally do that in housekeeping i think i don't i don't mind when we do it all right so liam yeah the Uh, last time i asked you you're gonna have to remind me what it was before i'm going to i'm about literally about to remind you thank you very much the last time i asked you yeah you had 1,096 films to watch. How many? 1,000. Yeah. And 96. Okay. I thought before that I was doing really well, wasn't I? Uh, so you started... I'll go through it, Liam. You started at 1091. Yeah. You went down to 1085. Yeah. You went up to 1086. Okay. 
You went up to 1103. That was a big jump. That is a big jump. Yeah. You went down to 1096. And we are all, Liam, all of us are sitting with bated breath, waiting to see what the number is. I'm going to be honest, it's gone up. How much? It's 1,123. Jesus. <laughs> so, um, Liam, yeah, that's, yeah. The t- that's the highest number we've got on the list. Yeah. yeah. Can you explain why? Yeah. Bloody Criterion had a sale on, didn't they? Well, Barnes & Noble had a Criterion sale on. Got you. 50% off. Oh. So, I saved... How many did you buy? I... I a few. But I saved 50%. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can call it saving yeah. at that point. No, I can. Mm, okay. Bloody HMV had another five for thirty, didn't they? Of course they did. So that was a pain in the arsehole. And uh, yeah, Avo had a sale as well. Oh right. Okay. So three sales. Yeah, basically. Well, two sales and a HMV five for thirty that always. Yeah. Get sorry. Me. Sorry. So yeah, two sales really did just do a number on me. And uh, I believe. I believe that the deal we'd made, or not the deal, but the goal you had been set was to just get below the original number, so 1,091. Yeah, so at the initial the initial goal was to get it below 1,000. Yeah, which just isn't going to happen. Then we realised that's maybe unrealistic of a goal. Because you're not going to be able to do it because you buy too much shit. So now it was to get it below the original number, yeah. Which you are also not on track for. What's the original number again? 1,091. So how, I only have to watch like 30 to get below 32. That. 32. 32 to get to it, so 33 to get below. Now, Liam, you only have to watch 33 and not buy any more films. That's, that's the step that I think you forget. That's the hard bit. That's that the bit that you're the, not going to do. That is the hard bit, yeah. Um, also, I need to just watch more films and stop playing so much PlayStation. Yeah. Because that's really just taken over lately. <laughs> So, but I go through phases with these things. So I'm sure I'll get bored of a PlayStation. I'll be back in a film th- phase soon, and I guess you've good. just got to hope it happens before our Christmas special. Yeah, is that is that my deadline? I've got to do. It before... I think so. Yeah, end of the year. That makes so sense. So if to me. I don't, is there going to be like a punishment or something? You have to sell all the ones you haven't watched. Well, that's not happening. <laughs> but maybe we could throw that to our listeners if they have. You have to watch. Ideas. You have to watch all of Studio Ghibli's films, but in reverse order. That would just be awful. Your absolute nightmare. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's throw it to our listeners if they can think of any punishments that would be suitable. Yeah, listeners, how do we punish Liam for not getting below 1,091, which definitely isn't going to happen, so you're going to have this punishment happen? Maybe they could buy me more films. Oh, that'd be a terrible punishment. What a horrible punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate that. Also, right, this, this also has to be a thing. Christmas and birthday presents can't be included in the total. No, yes, they can. No, because that's ridiculous. No, yes, they can. No, because what if someone buys me a lot of like a few films for my birthday or something? You ha- you ask for them, I assume. Yeah, I'm not going to not ask. Yeah, well, there you go then. What would people get me for my birthday then? I don't know. Nah, do we need to- that. They can't. I'm count. no. I mean, I'm. I think I as I think I get to be in charge of what gets added to the list. Okay. Because it's my challenge. I don't yeah. think you can start eliminating shit. I mean, people. What do people buy you? How many films are people buying you? I don't know. Like, people struggle with what to get me, so I just give them an Amazon list of, of films, and it normally has, like, 50 films on it, and I just choose from that. <laughs> well, that's good. Maybe this will be, like, a life lesson where you learn that it's not just films you need, and then you discover some new hobby, like knitting. My mum refused to buy me any films last year. Cause yeah, because it's a boring mind, present. we just moved in November, and I'd had to move with all the films. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I'm not buying you anymore. And then I was like, okay. And I got a... a um, like sandwich toaster <laughs> which I'm, I'm not you know not ungrateful for that it was a great gift but do you I, use it i haven't yet oh i would i love sandwich toasters. no that's the thing i the, right i want to our kitchen is so small there's nowhere for me to actually put it just plug it in on the floor somewhere well we're moving soon anyway so hopefully we'll get a bigger kitchen and i can get it all set up and actually start using it yeah you're moving to woking uh it's, it's an option it's one of the two mm. options that we've narrowed it down nope. to it de- it depends, Jack, how well you and potentially Dan sell it to us. We're going to sell it really well. And Tom. Tom can sell it to you. He lives there. That's true. So uh, that's, it's up to you guys, I guess. Good luck. You just wait, mate. I'm going to take you on a tour of Woking and show you all the cool sites. you are like, here's some strip clubs. I'm like, go, I'm, I'm, I'm sold. They've got a Taco Bell. They haven't got a comic book shop. That's the big thing that I'm annoyed at at the moment. You order them online. Yeah, no, but what I like about my local comic book shop is, like, I started doing the D&D there. I made friends there. You know, I wanted... Like that, basically, that social element. 
Is that it for this episode? I think so. So next episode, Jack. Yeah, what are we doing? Well, we're doing The Last Starfighter. Oh, who picked that? I didn't, did you? I, no, I don't think so. Oh, that's a bit of a mystery. Only, <laughs> who did it, Liam? Only Lee from the Atlantic Screen Connection podcast. We're finally having Lee on. Yeah, so we had Jason on not too long ago. Now we're having the other co-host, uh, Lee. He's going to join us. If I remember rightly, Lee was just furious that we'd had Jason. Oh, we, we had a very stroppy email. So <laughs> he's going to hate that we said that. He is, I know. Um, no, I'm, I'm really excited. I think our intention was to have them on separately so they could both choose their own like culture swap thing. And then at some point we might have them both on and they can choose a culture swap together. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we've done it this way. It isn't like favouritism or anything. It's just we wanted each of them to have their own chance of doing culture swap yeah um so i'm excited i am too yeah fantastic it'll be good um and that's it for nerd on nerd this week this is actually should come in at quite a reasonable time for our listeners we'll see i've been liam underwood we don't ever sign off like this yeah well you weren't signing off you normally sign off yeah you're right uh liam have you got any final thoughts yeah can we do how they can get in touch with us, please? Because we keep forgetting <laughs> Yeah, I was that. literally, I was setting you up so that you would say the wrong thing. And then I would, <laughs> damn it, you didn't fall for my subtle trap. I'm too good of a host, Jack. <laughs> God damn it. You're just a, prof- <laughs> we're just professional podcasters. Liam. Yeah. How can our wonderful fans get in contact with us? Uh, they can tweet us at nerd on nerd. They can yep. email us nerd on nerd pod at gmail.com. Okay. That they- makes sense to me. They can Facebook us if they really want to. Yep. Which is, you just go to like facebook.com forward slash, forward slash. nerd on nerd pod. All one word. All no one word. Uh, why not find us on YouTube? I'm uploading a load of content from our older stuff uh, to get that on YouTube. Go enjoy that. Um, just search nerd on nerd and we come up now, don't we? Way. I think, I think it has to all be one word still. Okay. But go have fun. Uh, if they want, they could rate um, and review us on iTunes. Anything about like three that. stars? Yeah, yeah, go do that. Uh, apparently it helps. Cool. Uh, Jack, any final thoughts? Uh, go listen to Won't Grow Up. I second that. Bye. Bye. Bye.